Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the first McKay virtual Firesat chat series with community leaders. Each chat is a is a one-on-one -on -one interview taped on Zoom and available on demand on Mr. McKay's YouTube, social media, and newsletter. Our first guest speaker today is Deep Habib from East Scarborough Storefront. Hi, Deep. Hi, John. Hi, Deep. Thank you I for remember. joining us. So let's begin. Over to you, Mr. Right. McKay. Hi, I'm uh, John McKay. I'm the uh, Member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood. And I've actually been the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood for almost 23 years, coming up June 2nd, 23 years. And over the course of those years, I meet a lot of people in the community. Um, and you, in some manner or another, know uh, a lot of people in the community, but mostly it's superficial. Um, I've known Deep here for way more years than he and I care to meet, uh, care to uh, admit. He has uh, stayed youthful and good looking. Um, I, I, on the other hand, have uh, not aged at all very well, but uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are friends. Um, and yet um, I thought that it would be really interesting to find out uh, a bit more about Deep who is a community leader, who's done amazing things in our community, and almost nobody knows anything about it. So, Deep, thank you for joining me in my first fireside chat. Now, as you know, right now the temperature is plus 30 outside. Why would we be having a fireside? I have no idea, but we're gonna have a chat, regardless of whether we're by a fireside or not. But anyways, welcome. <laughs> thanks, thank for, thanks for joining us. Yeah. So, Deep, the first thing I noticed about you is that you were born in Bangladesh. Yes, Dhaka, Bangladesh, yes. In Dhaka, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when did you come to Canada? 1999. And you were what, two years old? <laughs> no, I'm 46. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was two. <laughs> so 1999, uh, you came with your parents or without your parents? No, no, I came with my wife and my two kids. So my, my you know, my two sons. So yeah, uh, we came here in '99, and we are still here. It's 2019. Just and and why did you come? Um, my uh, why, why did I come? So my wife. You know, her parents are diplomats, so they, she never, and she's the only child, she never really lived anywhere. She never really lived back home at all. Mm. So when we got married, you know, so the pressure was on to go somewhere else. On the other hand, I come from a business family and my parents, and I'm the only son, so my parents will never let me go anywhere. <laughs> so, and I, you know, and I think Canada was more easier to come if you could come in an investor class back in the time. So it was a lot more, Things were a lot more, you know, lenient to come here, and because I was, I was very young. I don't even remember how old. I'm 46 now, so uh, less you know, 20 years. Yeah, yeah so 26, I, 25, 26. Yeah, so yeah. I did not know nothing about doing any business, running business here. So it, but you know, it, it was one of the countries, that, you know, that was very diverse and multicultural. So both the all the parents chose to, you know, decide to send us here. <laughs> I so. see. So, so, so you come here, 25, 26, you, you've got a wife, you've got a child, and how many two kids boys, you got yeah. now? Yeah. Two, two boys two now? Kids, two, two kids, yeah. Yeah, 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 two boys right now. Yeah. 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 The and, one is 25 uh, year old and the other one is 16. And have you ever done any uh, quote unquote business here in Canada since you no. came here as a business <laughs> no. investor? No, 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 it's not my thing. I was never into business, so, you know. Yeah. Always a rebel to, you know, uh, and that's all, no. Are you a rebel with a cause or a rebel without a cause? <laughs> I think both. <laughs> uh, and uh, so have you, uh, you know, I've known you for what, 15 plus years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Kingston Galloway uh, community area. Um, what did you do after you arrived in Canada? So whenever, you know, I, I, I was very lucky. I got a, you know, the... Being raised in a family, my dad was always very charitable, like always wanted to help out people. So I think that was always in my blood, like helping out people, going out with him, giving stuff to people. Or, you know, when there would be floods in the country, we will always go out and give stuff or, you know, relief to people. 
so that's I always had the side in me. I, w- I you know I went to a business school and did all this stuff, but I, ne- I was never interested in running business. So when I came to Canada, you know, I started looking and see what could I do. So there were you know like in terms of uh, what do you call jobs and stuff. So I my first job was at Flemington Park. So I used to work in Flemington Neighborhood Services for quite a few years. When I first came in, I was lucky enough to get a job right away. Yeah. And then in 2000. To this job at the storefront came in because I was on a contract at the at the Flemington Neighbor Services year to year, and then when this thing came in at storefront, so I applied for the job, and I'm still here. <laughs> here eighteen it. eighteen years later. Uh, eighteen yeah. years later, still here. You know, I met Anne for the first time in 2002 yeah. when we, you know when uh, I went for my interview, and you know her leadership really. There's a reason why you work in a place because there's a true leadership so that's the reason why you know like we were only two and a half staff and look where we are today you know have, yeah i know it's, it's an job. amazing amazing organization well we uh jokingly refer to ann as saint ann Gloger. Uh, for yeah, those who know. don't know uh ann is a force of nature and um, has built the east uh, east scarborough storefront into a very formidable organization uh and uh deep has been uh, you've been with her uh, almost yeah, from the from, beginning. Yes, yes. She opened up, uh, she was alone in 2001. Then she hired a part-time staff in the same year. Yeah. And then she, and I got hired in, in, in June in 2002. Yeah. So now, I left my job. You, you have a secret life though, from what I oh. understand. Yeah. You have a secret <laughs> life not, as a musician. No, not anymore. I used to play in a band for many years and then I quit in 2000. Nine, I just could not do it anymore. Really? The, it just, you know, it's a lot of commitment because the band was getting serious and you know, with all the traveling and touring, it just, you can't just take that kind of. So what, family, kind of, what kind of a band was it? It was a heavy metal band. It's a Canadian band. It's called Valkyrie's Cry. So most mm-hmm. of our fans are in Europe. So that's how we first got our break, really? you know, by, you know, from a small, you know, distribution company in Poland who started this to sell our stuff in Poland. We then ended up getting a record deal in a, in a German record company, you know, uh, called Fiedel. Oh God, I, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we, you know, now it's- Watch it, this is a family time. show. This is a family show, I know, so, so <laughs> it's, you know, so, yeah, so that's, that's all it is. So, and mm. we toured a lot, traveled, and, and then 2008 I, or nine, I, I just could not do it anymore because, you know, so where did you uh, where did you tour Europe, uh, North America? Yeah, yeah mostly in, in Europe, Europe and yeah. here. Yeah, we yeah. we played a, a lot of Toronto shows. So most mm-hmm. as um, most of our shows are were in Germany or you know. Uh, in, and where and in, uh, what happened to the band? Did the band break up after you left? No, no. After I left, the band took some time off, and they they went back. Uh, you know, you know, we, they took a new singer and everything. But then now the band is totally dismantled, so it's no, no longer. Really. No. And were you a singer, musician, musician? Yeah, singer? I was the singer, the lead singer. Yeah, yeah. Really, the lead singer. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's crazy. We have, we have a we have a Bono in our midst here. My no, no, no. Yeah. I ain't any good as Bono. No. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, met Bono when he came to Toronto uh, once. We had a fine chat down uh, downtown Toronto. Well, uh, uh, he's he's very interested in uh, third world issues, as you know. And yes, at that yes, point, yes. I was. Uh, the uh, lead sponsor on a um, on a better aid bill, uh, which um, uh, sidebar is that uh, we um, spend four or five billion dollars a year uh, giving out aid to other countries, and mm-hmm. a lot of it is very poorly uh, managed and spent. So he was quite ke- quite keen on the on the bill and had a really quite interesting uh, mm. uh, chat with him. But uh, funny guy, he was a very funny guy. He's very dedicated. He always The you can fill out it quite easily. Anyways, uh, so so you you give up uh, the um, being a musician in two thousand and nine, and 
and uh, presumably dedicate yourself to uh, to uh, East Scarborough Storefront after that. Yeah, well, I've been dedicated since I was hired, but you know, the the side, you know, the whole thing to do it on the side, it was getting too much. So yeah, yeah. and what and what is the job? Uh, how would you describe your own job? So I am the manager of volunteers, events, and facilities. So my job has been, you know, changed, grown. So what I do, I manage all the storefront facilities. We have two facilities. I look after the community garden. I manage over 300 volunteers that comes through the door over the year. And then I take a lead on all our signature events, uh, you know, or any major events that we'd be doing throughout the year. Uh, we don't call our, you know, because every agency has departments. We call it circles. So mm-hmm. I'm always the background music, you know, so when the, any circles wants to run a big event, I will do work behind the scene to make sure things are ready. It's just like thinking of setting up for a concert, a crew has to have the show, you know, stage ready yeah. before yeah. the band plays. So that's majority of my work. A lot of, back, you know, doing stuff from background. And, and since I was there for such a long time, so it's a relationship management and relationship building all the time like people like yourself all the people you know like you know Peter Van Vierge or every key player in the neighborhood uh, who are around for a long time churches local you know uh, you know like small grassroots groups so a lot of things to major you know building relationship and keeping the relationship and so and you're, you're the stuff. you're the logistics guy really yeah, behind the scenes, yes, most right, of the time. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the the obvious question, you know, we're obviously doing this uh, interview by Zoom, um, mm-hmm. uh, for good reason. So, how has COVID affected your work? Um, you know, for we closed our site on on March 16th. I think the first day of the March break. That is the time everybody. So we had to decide what we're going to do because everybody all the public places were closed so uh, the management sat down and we decided because everything else is closed if we were about to be open then we become a place for people to gather and and right. it's not you know and it's not safe so uh, and then we are also a backbone organization we want to keep everybody safe and healthy so we decided to close since you know like our work is in the building in the neighborhood so definitely covid-19 has changed that but now we have, you know, the, it was a lot of new ways of doing things. So the staff, since the day one, we're keeping a very much social media, strong social media presence through our Facebook, our Instagram, uh, our KGO updates, which you, thank you for sharing it with your, uh, all your constituents that you always send it out. So we're keeping a big social media presence and, and dispersing information on the COVID-19, everything. So we are still able to keep our whole staff team. We were not, you know, there was no layoffs. Oh, really? Good. Team. Yeah, again, it's a little, as I said, you know, the leadership of Anne and the management team is very strong. So we, you know, so every two weeks we have a focus. So from the beginning, you know, when the SERB benefit came in or people are applying for EI and everything, so staff are doing, we're all taking turns answering phones. Monday to Friday, we're still answering phones. Every day the phones are forwarded to one of the staff. So we're still taking phone calls. People are still able to reach out. Uh, if somebody's not able, don't have access to computer or internet, they can call us and we can help them to fill out information for the employment insurance or any kind of government benefit. Well, that's that's very helpful. So is you, so some of your staff or all of your staff are, are getting the government benefit, the SERB benefit? Sorry? Uh, is, is the staff actually receiving the benefit as well? No, the, uh, no, no, no. We're still no? Be able to know everybody's working. Oh, you, you've got. Oh, okay. So you've oh, got every, uh, sufficient resources to do to keep on going by yourself. Yeah, oh, okay. but everybody have a, everybody's working from home and keeping. Like you know, we have different constituents. Like you know, we have. I told you we have circles. So I'm the volunteer events and facility circle that I manage. Then there's the right. grass the grassroots leadership circle that works with the grassroots leaders, the youth in the community and you know like we're running all the you know the, all the grassroots leadership resident led initiatives then we have the employment staff team so everybody right. is managing their sta- you know you know uh constituents to zoom or you know online job search programs or helping people there's a lot of constant connection with the residents and what's what's been your big surprise in the last uh eight eight ten weeks uh what what is kind of um, gobsmacked you for one of uh, one of a better term. Like what what we're finding the needs in uh, the community in, in terms of need, uh, but also in terms of 
uh, how people reacted to the needs? You know, like to the, in terms of needs, like three things that I, w I was going to tell you, like when I was thinking, we were looking at the questions, like we're finding out how many people don't have access to the internet. You know, oh, access, really? you know not in just Scarborough. The yeah, well, the families that we, we work with, they live on a twelve to fifteen thousand dollar yearly budget. You know, like who can right, afford to right. pay, you know, a hundred dollar internet bill every month? You know, so right. so internet, you know, even somebody have internet, they might not have the gadget or you know device. Like you know, you could mm -hmm. have internet, but you could just have a phone, you know, on, or internet on your phone. So internet, access to food, and income tax has been the three biggest thing that we're learning. Because, you know, uh, though in a federal government, uh, government have extended the dedicated, you know, what they call deadline of inter, uh, income tax, but we're, we run the income tax clinic, as you know. Right, I know. With Wood yeah. Green. So we're not able to do that. So we are still waiting for our Wood Green to see how we can run it with the situation when in the first or second phase, I don't know how we can do that. So a lot of people are not able to file the income taxes and they can't afford to go to places like, you know, uh, H&R Block because they charge right, arm right. and leg to file for an yeah. income tax. So yeah. those have been the three major needs in the community that we're seeing and definitely isolation, you know, uh, people are isolated. Yeah. And the reason why we're always answering the phone calls so that people can still reach out, even not for service. Like we, you know, the storefronts, one of the key thing over the year was building foundation and trust. All right, these years, right. you know, like people, you know, like I can pick up a phone and tell volunteers to come seven o'clock in the morning because they believe in us, you know, and yeah, our doors yeah. have been always open and it's a relationship ongoing. So even people that are calling just to say hi or hello or just to talk about a problem, just into which it might not be a community service help, but I think they have a place to go still to call somebody and to hear a familiar voice. So they can be connected and not feel so isolated, in, even in a time like this. So for um, uh, so for fantasy's sake, let's pretend um, I'm Justin Trudeau. Um, mm. Not nearly as good looking. Um, he needs a haircut. I need a haircut. Um, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> you need a haircut. Yeah. Um, and you know the the federal government has been rolling out programs left, right, and center, um, mm. and um, and I would say we have had more hits than misses, but um, mm -hmm. uh, you've had some upfront and personal experience with uh, the people who are um, uh, who are uh, the chief or the intended beneficiaries mm -hmm. of many of these programs. Uh, I'd be interested in your uh, candid comments as we wind up this little fireside chat. Like what would like what will we recommend to federal government in terms of yeah, yeah, what absolutely. else they can do? Yeah. Like yeah. again, like if there was you know definitely you know better paying jobs has been our always you know like raising the wages the minimum wages has been always our thing for us. Families cannot live on a fourteen dollar fifteen dollar an hour job. You know it, 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 it you know the apartment building behind the storefront has been seventeen hundred dollar for one bedroom. So definitely mm. you know better you know like minimum wage to be you know, uh, to raise the minimum wage, better housing, and Scarborough, we need better transit. You know, like Kennedy can be just the one last stop in Scarborough. We're hearing, you know, there's all this new, uh, what do you call, express bus route, this, that, and everything goes on the major roads. Families in living in the poverty, in the, this, all these pockets of Markham and Lawrence, you who are under, you know, paid and under work and underemployed, then they have to take still two, three buses to go to a job interview or to go to their, you know, go to another, you know, to do their day-to-day -day job. People have two, three jobs to. Well, you're preaching to the me. choir, brother. Uh, Sorry? <laughs> uh, you're, you're preaching to the choir because uh, uh, this has been something that the Scarborough Caucus has been on and all over. Transit, so transit, we, transit. Yes, and, 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 you know, and also if there was a way of, you know, like, you know, like some people do want to work outside the city, but, you know, like multi fare, people cannot afford to pay TTC, go, and all these things. It is getting out, you know, everything has become so expensive. So anything that the government can invest in better transportation and, you know, some kind of, you know, like Scarborough needs its own 
I would say a, 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 a trade school, like the East End Trade Center that we've been, you have heard about that for the longest time, yeah, yeah. to the East Carver Works and stuff. If there was a place for, you know, because we have lots of people who want to be in the trades and trades, we should definitely be pushing our younger generation or the new generation, or the people who are retraining or looking for newer trade in you know, a way to make money. But mm. then most of the trade schools are down, you know, outside, not in Scarborough. We don't have any, any trade center yeah. here. It would be great if the government invested in a trade center that is right in the heart and center of Scarborough, the people of Scarborough. And it doesn't have to be people of Scarborough. Anybody in the, from the city or GTA could come and, and, and learn about all the, you know, get better trained in all the stuff, yeah. all this kind of thing. Well, before, third, before, you know, I let you, yeah, before I let you go, but I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, um, on a minimum income. Uh, a lot of discussion that um, uh, with all of these programs, we are doing a backdoor on essentially a, um, a minimum income. Um, aside from uh, the cost, uh, what is your thought as far as um, every citizen in Canada having a minimum income? Oh, like a guaranteed income kind of thing yep. like they have in yep. Europe. I, I think that would be great, especially for the families that we ha we work with. Because, you know, like if you're a, like we deal with a lot of families, you know, a single mom with two kids or three kids. How could they live a life on $1,100 in Ontario Works plus the, right. you know, by the child, some child, you know, you know, support has gone up. Thank you uh, to you guys, because over the time the child support has been you know, like this right now, at least some of those people can pay their rent. But even after paying their rent and stuff, as I told you, a one bedroom behind the storefront is $1,800 or $1,700 plus, uh, you know, utility. So definitely any kind of guaranteed income support supplement over on the top of, you know, on works mm -hmm. will definitely be helpful because, you know, right, you know, cost of rising, you know, and we're saying that no, not the families have, you know, computers or laptops. How can they even afford to buy yeah. when they have to, when they're still not be able to pay rent or put food on the table? So those are almost yeah. like luxury, having an iPad or computers for them. So I, absolutely, if something like yeah. that were to happen, it, it will definitely one step far in a closer of doing reducing poverty. So if we, if well, there is, there is some, happen. that idea is gaining some traction in some circles. Um, and um, uh, in the uh, previous provincial government, there were three areas, Hamilton, Lindsay, and I've forgotten one other, where they were trying out a guaranteed minimum income. And I thought that there was some um, merit, well, I think there is some merit in the idea, but I mm -hmm. thought that the, uh, the, as a, as a pilot project that was actually having some success, but it was, <clears throat> but it was since uh, shut down by the current provincial government. I, um, cool. we, we got to close to leave it there. I'm, I'm looking at the window behind you, uh, deep and, uh, the, the light is coming through and yeah, you, you're almost as, you're almost a saint. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, you know no, no. Is, is, is there, is there such a thing as a, um, a Bangladeshi saint? I don't really know. No, but, yeah. no, no. no I'm uh, you no, know, there's no saint. If anything, no, there's I'm no a, saint. Eh? I am a sinner, you know, so I don't think yeah. I'm a saint. I, 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 well, in, in that respect, you and I um, <laughs> occupy the same space. <laughs> we are all sinners. So, yeah, so uh, with, with, with our confession out there, uh, um, I just wanted to thank you for uh, for joining me. Uh, this has been a bit of fun, and it's also been an opportunity to talk uh, one on one. Um, I think in the last fifteen years, we've we've had a lot of chats, but we haven't had oh, really any talks. No, no. So I know, uh, I know. I'm glad I'm glad we've remedied this, and um, and I'm sure that uh, other people in our uh, constituency will be uh, will be interested in listening. So uh, so thank you for doing that. And thank you. You're a John. good man, you, Deepa, babe. No, thank you for doing everything that you do. And uh, Anne and I, we always talk about that how, you know, lucky, you know, the East Scarborough is for having the right politicians in our, in our community like yourself. We have known you for, at, what, what, 18, 19 years now, and, you know, and then, uh, you know, we had, you know, for, uh, for politicians like, you know, Margaret Best and, you know, uh, Mitzi Hunter, who is right now John, you know, Paul Ainsley. David Soknacki, Marion Chambers. We had great people, uh, Gay Coburn, you know, like in the storefronts, you know, that crisis in 2005, you guys all came together to help us. And especially yeah. you, you always are, you know, your staff is always there 
uh, anytime we have questions, we can always call and get in touch. And that's what a real politician's office does. It really responds to the communities. So thank you for everything you do and your staff does. And thank you for listening to us. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Deep. And uh, I want everyone to know that that was not a paid advertisement. No, no, no it would not be. No. <laughs> okay, no, so we'll turn no. it back to Layla. Thanks very thank much, you. Deep. Well, uh, that's a wrap. Thank you so much. On behalf of John and the staff, we want to thank our guest, Deep Habib, for making time in his busy schedule to join us today. Stay tuned for our next McKay Virtual Fireside Chat Series with community leaders. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Leila.